That's me! God damn it! Hey guys, it's Tejo here! Welcome to Tejo 2 Cast! Yes, I'm here with Red Monkey! How you doing, man? How you doing, man? I'm doing good, Taz. Good to be here, an absolute honor. Awesome, awesome, man. Yeah, so uh, I know, I know, I know, I know where you are gaming from. But I'm just saying, so people at home know. So where, where, where are you gaming from? Where do I come from? I'm down in uh, south coast in the UK. That's cool. That's cool. That's awesome. I like to get, I like to get a gist of where everyone is, you know, just so people they get an idea. They, cause there's gamers all across everywhere, you know. So yeah, what? So I think people, I think people can usually tell by my accent. <laughs> Okay, so um, so how long have you been a gamer? Just curiosity. Oh man, well, uh, being a '60s child, yeah, I am that old. Okay. Um, I kind of used to be a bit of an arcade rat, so I love pinball. Oh, yeah. And uh, I remember kind of like uh, probably a lot of people from that era. My first exposure to video games was Pong, uh, in about '74, and then uh, later on in the '70s, around about '78, '79, these strange cabinets started appearing in the arcades, and um, that's when I had my first go on Asteroids, and then Galaxy and Defender, Space Invaders, you name it. Gattaca, Played all of those in the arcades. Yeah, absolutely loved them. And uh, I think my favourite came along a couple of years after that, which was Battlezone, the, uh, the kind of oh, yeah. 2D, 2D vector graphic tank game where you had the, the kind of uh, periscope that you had to look into, and it oh, was yeah. just absolutely awesome. It's very Tron-like, you know. So, um, so from the, yeah. game, the games you used to play back then, like uh, like like a, a certain game, like if you think of the games back then you used to play, and then the games now. <laughs> How has well, that evolved? <laughs> Well, that, that's kind of like that's kind of it, really. I mean, I, d I didn't really own a console, uh, you know, for a long time. Never really been a console person anyway. I've always been PC, oh, yeah. um, and I think it was really, you know, there was a couple of my friends who had um, kind of Commodore sixty fours and Amigas, that kind of stuff, and uh, I remember playing Ghostbusters on them. But you know, I didn't really own anything at that that particular time myself. Um, and I think the first exposure I had to a proper PC game was in 1984, which was Elite, the uh, David Braben game. Oh, yeah. And um, and that's kind of weird because I play Elite Dangerous, which is the uh, the newer game that came out a few years ago. And you know, when you talk about 2D vector graphics, I mean the original Elite on the BBC computer was uh, was 2D vector graphics, and I absolutely loved it. I love Space Sims, and uh, and I've gone full circle. So I'm back in there now in these gorgeously rendered universes and planets and you know all kinds of stuff and uh you know so that that whole full circle thing of uh, 30 odd years later and i'm back in the same universe <laughs> of elite dangerous no, I don't but um yeah it's, it's been a it's been a weird journey i got my first pc in uh in the mid 80s and i got it because i was self-employed then and i got yeah. it for all my paperwork and i was running an international vinyl business doing shipping for vinyl records and stuff cool. and uh after two weeks, I almost threw the thing out the window. I didn't, couldn't work out how to make it work. And uh, I thought, well, what's the best thing I can do here? So I got a screwdriver, I took the thing apart, put it back together again, learned a bit of programming. And I uh, haven't looked back since. That was the only kind of computer I, I bought off the shelf. Everything from then has been kind of built over the years myself. And, uh, you know, did all the typical thing with PC games. Started off probably with Commander Keen, I think it was yeah. back then. That's a good then I moved on to Wolfenstein 3D, Doom, Wing Commander, and Privateer, nice. all those kinds of games. And then uh, gradually, you know, over the years, I kind of got into a little bit more console gaming, Sega Mega Drive, um, oh, and my favourite console. One. Sega Mega yeah, Drive. Yeah, my one of my friends in the UK, they're like Sega Mega Drive. That was a huge one. I'm like, okay. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, Golden Axe and Street Fighter, oh, a ton of fun with those games. Oh, and yeah. then uh, probably my favourite console of all time was the Dreamcast. It was so ahead of its time. You know, I mean, this this console was incredible. You know, I mean, it had it was it was before you could actually game over the internet, and it had an internet connection. And it was just like, say what? And uh, yeah, just playing, um, you know, everything I could lay my hands on on the Dreamcast. But then, you know, I went back to, kind of pretty much went back to PC gaming. I do have an Xbox 360, but that's for my wife, really, to play Guitar Hero. I don't really touch it. And, uh, you know, I just PC game all the time now. Um, I don't touch consoles. And that's not to say, you know, 
that I don't like consoles. I just no, think just, each their own. You know, you find what you're comfortable it's with and enjoy choice. the games. Yeah, it's everyone's choice. Like I know when people are like, "Yeah, man, you gave, you gave into computer, computer Nazi, yeah." Man. Yeah. Like, I don't. I, I'm like, I start on console. I'm like, I have respect for both of them in both respects. I'll say that, like you said, with a even computer, like, like computer when you take it apart and you put it back together again, it's like big kid Lego. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's all it is. So. Yeah. I'll say with computer, yeah, it is. it's been more flexible, but you know, like, like console, yeah, it's like, mo yeah, like, it's like, sure, I was in my basement, my you know, and in, in my mom's house saying, yeah, I'm going to play something, yeah, I'm going to play some game, and it's like, yeah, um, yeah, um, yeah you're giving a PC yeah, now, it's kind of like, <laughs> more money, you understand, <laughs> the actual, the actual, like, uh, um, you, 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 you can expand your horizon by paying more money, but yes, <laughs> it's yeah. not cheap. <laughs> No, no, it's not cheap. It's not cheap, but so, um, you know, yeah. it's kind of. I built, I built my first PC back in. Uh, I think it must have been about eighty-seven, um, and you know, it was kind of weird back then. The internet was in its infancy. It was all bulletin boards back then, and um, you know, you didn't really have the big kind of online retailers back then to buy all the PC parts. And I used to join these bulletin boards to find out where I could hit up the Taiwanese manufacturers and used to send these letters off to the manufacturers and you know you could send 10 letters off to the different manufacturers and uh, the different outlets out there and you probably get one back um, you know just saying to them that you're going to be uh, building PCs and they'd send you some kit for free but you know none of it was translated everything all the manuals were in Taiwanese so it was a little bit hit and miss but it was great fun you know I, I kind of don't regret any of it and uh, it taught me a hell of a lot you know so, uh, are you on YouTube or are you on, uh, are you on Twitch? Just so everyone at home knows. Well, I kind of do have a Twitch channel, but I haven't really used it. Uh, the plan was to use it, but it just kind of sits there a little bit dead at the moment. I am I do use it to host other people. That's the primary yeah. use I really have for it. But my YouTube channel started a few years ago, um, and I kind of just uh, switched on my YouTube account and didn't really use it because I was still doing some reading about the best things to uh, to, to use for recording games and all that kind of stuff. So, um, yeah, my, my first recording was State of Decay. Um, and uh, that's kind of how I got to know uh, Lucas, uh, Azamain, uh, Mr. Echo 58, uh, a whole bunch of other people out there, the GSG crew. And that whole thing kind of, again, you know, after a few years, we started our own spin off channel called Zed Heads TV. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we're all kind of real hardcore state of decay players you know that's where our, our love lies and that's how we all kind of met up so it's uh you know they're a great bunch of people and that's how i, I got to know you through uh through bad hippie you got to know us a lot and you know and so on and so forth man you know how it goes the community just grows and that's what i love about it it's the community for me it's not about being famous so one, one question. i'm, ne I'm so, never going to make money or be famous you said uh Z has tv now explain that a little bit more just, uh, what type of stuff do you guys do well, Z Heads TV was this kind of uh, collective, as I say. It's uh, Luke has BXNY, Mr. Echo 58, it's uh, Wayne GSG, uh, the Azamain, uh, better known as Eric, yep. um, and also uh, GSG's wife, CPGSG. <laughs> and we kind of just got together as a complete collective to, to play other games through a dedicated channel. Um, and they're spin offs from, you know, all spin offs from our own channels. Um, but yeah, we kind of promote uh, Z Heads TV. Wayne recently went off and did uh, E3 and was selling, it, uh, pretty much doing a, a lot of uh, promotion for Z Heads TV under that. That's cool. Uh, so we kind of do it. We don't have a, a you know a huge number of subs. Bad Hippie has been our latest acquisition. Very good one at that, I would say. Um, Bad, Bad Hippie is awesome. I, I know him. He's an awesome. Oh yeah. Guy. He's a great guy. He's it's, a great guy. It's kind so of funny you said Azerman because I'm like Azerman. He was actually my first. Two, I was actually my first two cast uh, interview episode. I was actually really happy. Yeah, yeah. Eric's a good guy. You know, um, I, I, I think he's. Uh, you know, he's he's one of those YouTubers that uh, people either love or hate. Um, you know, if the, the guy will tell it how it is. I, I personally, I find it really refreshing. You know, I like his style. Oh yeah, because there's a lot of people that will just you know they'll just come out and the one thing is just like 
There's people that are like, you know, they all want to be like, they all want to be like, you know, it's on YouTube. It's not. Trust me. Trust me. That's why I say all the times after all my episodes, I'm like, if you don't like this, please go back to my other episodes. You can meet a whole lot of people. Go follow and sub to them, not me. Go follow and sub to them. Yeah. They're awesome. Yeah. I think that's the biggest mistake a lot of YouTubers make, you know, they, they kind of want to start up and they want to try and emulate someone else and yeah. that is a big mistake. The best thing you can do is just be yourself, you know, you'll find your feet, you'll find your own audience yeah, and that's the best thing to do. Yeah. If you're doing it for the fame, then you're in it for the wrong reasons. You've got to do it for the love of it. Oh, yeah. So would you say that's your, uh, if you had a message that you can give my audience and whatnot, like if you got, if that, would you say that that'd be a uh, advice to everyone that they can use, you know? You know, be yourself, be just, yourself you know, just you know play just be play yourself just, yeah. that's just it be yourself find your own feet yeah. you know it's really daunting when you first start a YouTube channel um, and I know a lot of people do the same thing like I did they start off without any doing any commentary and you know it's very difficult at first it's a distraction uh, you kind of find that you're gonna make a lot of mistakes in your gameplay because you're having to uh, you're having to commentate on you know, while you're actually playing. And that's a real challenge at first, but it does get easier the more you do it. Um, but, you know, a lot of viewers don't seem to understand that. And it's kind of, I always say to people, well, you kind of, uh, you know, any kind of real negative comments is, you know, go home, when you get home, put your favorite game on and talk all the way through about exactly what you're doing. And you'll see how many mistakes you make in that game. You'll see how much you die. <laughs> and you also see that your gameplay will go down by about 40%. It's so, it, you know, it's an art form. It really is. It's, it's something just like that's, I was explaining uh, to my girlfriend the other day. Apparently, yeah. she just got into Black Ops. And I'm like, zombies. And I'm like, it's just, I'm like, you die, you die, you die. And then you learn fast. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. But, but like and, you explained to me, like, State of Decay, I have never played it before. And then he's like, yes, it's a one-time kit. Like, you die, you start off a new character. I'm like, oh, shit. I'm going to have a lot of fun with this game because I'm going to die a lot. Oh, yeah. It's a steep learning curve with State of Decay. And I think this is it. You know, I mean, it was a, it was a, an Xbox arcade title originally. Oh, yeah. And... Uh, you know, the whole thing is it looks kind of it, it kind of looks a little bit obvious on the surface, but it's not. There's a lot going on underneath the hood. There's a lot of things that you've got to juggle, a lot of things you've got to take notice of in the game. Um, and, and I know we were talking about this earlier, Taz, before we, you know, we actually came on air. All right. Um, you know, about horror games, and uh, you know, just for the record, I don't like horror games. <laughs> oh yeah. Um, all right, guys. If, if you're going to his channel, don't. Uh, if you're going to his channel, don't look for horror games, please. For love of God, yeah. don't look for horror games. But I, I don't know, I, you know, I, I guess it's one of those things, it's whether do you class zombies as, as real horror. I think the whole thing for me was the survival uh, yeah. aspect of the game. That's why I really got into State of Decay. I was looking for something that was uh, kind of where you're not just doing this mindless kind of zombie slaying, even though that's great fun, I can't deny it. Uh, yes. But no, horror games in, in general, it's like Outlast. I couldn't play that. I'd absolutely crap my pants. I just wouldn't, you know. Even when I first started playing State of Decay, I didn't leave the home base for two weeks. I was too bloody scared. That is one game that everyone wants me to play. They want me to play Outlast or, F or Five Nights at Freddy's. <laughs> no. I'm like, oh, no. I'm so scared. I might do it one time, but I swear. Trust me. Yeah. I get, catch me drunk enough and test me like out of my mind. Trust me. I'll be like, yeah, I'm playing it. I'll be like, why am I questioning that I'm playing this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just couldn't play those sort of games. And the funny thing is, I, I I'm absolutely love horror films you know i'm and i'm i'm a massive massive fan of the zombie genre as well because it's it's kind of i know it's a little bit probably overdone these days and has yeah. been for quite a long time but you know back in the day when i was growing up there are only two definitive zombie films and that was uh white zombie 1932 with bella lugosi and the other one was uh, i walked with a zombie and that was 1943 and both of those were based around this uh this kind of whole sort of like haitian voodoo uh, kind of genre of zombie, you know, where people are buried and they're given a special type of drug and they wake back up again. Yeah. You know, and then you fast forward, uh, you know, for uh, to Romero, and um, you know that was something completely different. I mean, the the kind of racial undertones in uh, White Zombie and I Walk with a Zombie with this whole thing around, you know, um, you know, black people being being the real underbelly and the nasty piece of society yeah, yeah. and and you know it was just kind of how it was back in those days and it was it really wasn't very nice and no. you, you fast forward to the romero 
uh, genre, which really was the defining moment of, uh, of, of zombie movies, uh, Night of the Living Dead. And, you know, the guy's got a black lead in it. And, you know, it, it really did address a lot of those, uh, a lot of those problems, social problems, as well as, uh, as well as defining the zombie genre. You know, this wasn't some kind of voodoo thing going on. This was a mysterious epidemic that no one knew how it happened. One, one of my uh, favorite you know, that was it. I, one of my favorite directors man, I was, hooked. Stuff was, uh, was also, um, sorry, okay, I'm just saying, one of my favorite directors, I swear, I like how, um, Ro I like how Rob Zombie does, like, he actually remade some of the older ones. So, like, stuff yep. like Halloween, stuff like, uh, you know, even Night of the Living Dead, he actually, re he actually remade that one. Yeah, well, Night of the Living Dead was remade in 1990. Yeah. And uh, there's kind of a bit of a tie up there because Tom Savini, who's the special effects, uh, a, a really respected special effects uh, artist yeah. um, in, in the movie world, he was originally going to do the, the FX on, um, uh, for the original Night of the Living Dead, but he got shipped off to Vietnam and he was a war photographer. So uh, he came back and was always really good friends with Romero and um, remade the film uh, in 1990, a color version. And it was just, you know, the script was exactly the same. There, There's nothing different about the film. He just wanted to make a film in a genre that he enjoyed, um, you know, and applying some newer techniques that he'd learned as well in the industry. So, uh, you know, Tom Savini's, uh, he, he's absolutely huge in, uh, certainly in, in the zombie genre. And, uh, you know, he always gets cast in a lot of Robert R Rodriguez movies as well. So, you know, he's an actor, director, special effects guy. Um, but yeah, great mates with Romero, so those two go back a long way. Alright, well anyways, that's, uh, that's time for today, man. Sorry to get you off, but I'm saying, yes, thank you, Red Mikey, for being on the show, man. Oh man, it's been absolute honour, as I said at the beginning, and thanks very much for giving me this opportunity, Taz, it's been great. Okay guys, well you know what, I'm going to put Red Monkey's links to his Twitch and his YouTube down below, so definitely you can check him out. Awesome, and, and I'm going to definitely also, um, I'm going to also link up Azerman and Luke Cass as well, there's a bunch of great guys as well, check them out as well. So, like I always say guys, you know, please. Leave a like. I like you too, guys. And please leave a comment because, hey, I like to talk to you guys too. Now, please leave a subscribe if you want to. I'm not saying you have to, but please don't judge this on one video. Go back to my other videos and then go back. You might meet someone new. You might actually like some content. So, I, I always say, I'll see you guys next time, guys. See you guys! <laughs>